Hello. Happy Halloween, first of all. Second of all, it's spooky out here. It is spooky season, and I don't mean Halloween. I mean, there are some spooky things happening on the internet that I need to talk about because if I get one more ad for a weight loss pill, I'm going to lose my mind. Let's jump in. I'm going to talk about Halloween for two seconds, then we're going to talk about some pop culture things that have been happening and some trends I'm seeing that are concerning. So buckle up. By the way, welcome to another episode of A Dose of Sass. It's your girl, Caitlin of Sass and Cellulite. And if this is your first time ever joining me, welcome. If you're a regular listener, also welcome. Love you. New or old, leave me a review. Share it with a friend. Now let's jump in. First and foremost, it's Halloween. It feels weird because it's a Thursday. I don't have any day of Halloween plans other than handing out candy to my neighbors, but I want to talk a little bit about Halloween candy because I know that that can be a bit of a tricky time for folks, whether you are in recovery or just navigating your relationship with food, whether you're a parent who's trying to navigate how to present kids with candy, what to do about that. In my past relationship with food, I definitely had a hard time with self-control around candy at Halloween. And I want to talk about the way that we talk about our relationship with candy, because if you catch yourself saying things like, I just can't have it in the house or I'll go crazy. That's a little bit more harmful than helpful. The answer to being in control around candy is not to eliminate the candy entirely. If Halloween candy for you is something that you find yourself often feeling out of control around, I know it's going to sound counterintuitive, but I actually encourage you to have more Halloween candy. I don't mean to go crazy. If you're listening to this podcast and you're anything like me, You might have an all or nothing mindset. And so when you hear someone say like, just let yourself eat the Halloween candy, you think to yourself, well, then I'll never stop. That's not what I'm saying. The reason you feel out of control around Halloween candy is because you've put it on a pedestal. It is this seasonal, special, only can have on certain times of the year, certain times of the day, only a certain amount. It's this limited edition, special thing. And what we need to do is to make it not so special. I always have some kind of sweet in my house. And at this stage in my relationship with food and my recovery journey, I'm at a place where I often forget about it, which is wonderful. But if you're not there yet, it is helpful to have access to candy or something sweet more often if you feel out of control around it. Why? Because it starts to lessen the importance. And this is especially important if you're a parent trying to teach your kid how to be around candy. If you make a big deal out of it, it will be a big deal. And the goal is to have candy be kind of a neutral subject. The answer is not my kids can have candy anytime they want, because as a parent, you are trying to help them build nutritious meals. But if if you or your child always views candy as a special out of reach, can't have thing, then of course you're going to go overboard on it. I, I, in, in years past, I swear like the whole month of October felt like this sneaky, I was thinking about it constantly. Candy at a school function, candy at the office, candy at the store, temptation everywhere. And because I had told myself it was something I couldn't have, when I inevitably did, it felt like I was breaking the rules. I was completely guilt-ridden. I would often binge. I would hide it. There's many a times I would be stuffing candy wrappers in the bottom of the trash can. And all of that added to the out of controlness around candy. And in order to stop doing that, I had to give myself permission to eat the candy and that meant doing it more often. So our goal is to take it off the pedestal, have candy all year round. I I recommend it because here's the thing that happens is it might feel overwhelming at first and feel like you're never going to stop eating it, but you will, you will, it will lose its power. And then now I can have a bowl of Halloween candy out on my counter all month long. And the bowl is still full. I have a piece here and there. I had like five little mini Twixes yesterday, but I don't feel anything, any sort of way about it. There's a reason I put a little something sweet in my snack boxes. Not because I've earned it, not because it's reward, not because it's the dessert I get if I eat my fruits and veggies, but because it's just another part of my snack. And actually, if I only had the piece of candy, if I only had the something sweet, I probably wouldn't feel all that great. But because I'm having the fruit and the veggie and the fat and the protein and the thing, it balances my blood sugar. I feel fulfilled. I feel satisfied. And then I'm not one, depriving myself and two, thinking about it for the rest of the day. If I didn't include it, 
it might cause me to go overboard. And that's my recommendation for you as well. Whether you're an adult or you have kids, when it comes to Halloween candy, keep eating it and add it to your stuff. You might go a little overboard on Halloween itself, but then throw a piece in your lunchbox. I saw a dietitian post about how she handles kids and Halloween candy. And she says on the night of Halloween, like if you're going to go trick or treating, have a full dinner. Don't neglect dinner because you're going to have a bunch of candy. Fill yourself up with nutrients first. Then you're less one, less likely to go overboard on the candy and two more likely to feel good. And then let them have the candy serve it with a glass of milk. So they're a little bit extra fulfilled. This is a note to your adult self as well. And then after that, If you're a parent, you can decide when to give them the candy, but I encourage you to do it with meals. Just as another side, not as a reward, not as a treat, not as an extra special something. And please, I learned about this just in the last couple of years, and I'm so glad this wasn't a thing. Maybe it was when I was a kid, but we did not do this. And I just learned about it. There's something called the Switch Witch. Please don't do this. The Switch Witch is a fun little, uh, I shouldn't say fun, an anti-fun little Halloween tradition where parents will take all their kids' Halloween candy and swap it out for like a different prize. So after Halloween night, they like put all their little candy outside their door, like a tooth fairy, and they take all their Halloween candy and swap it for like money or a stuffed animal or a more healthy snack. I know that that sounds helpful, but you're just adding to the over importance of the candy. They're probably more likely to hide some of their candy from you. And even if you're like, but they really like the prize, great. Give them a prize for something else. (laughs) We don't need to demonize the candy in order to build a healthy relationship with it. We don't. So that's my two cents on Halloween candy. Let yourself have it. Have it all year round. And keep eating your fruits and veggies. Okay? Now for some more spooky stuff. There's been some interesting things happening on the internet. It's getting to be a scary place out there. And I'm not even talking about the election. As someone who is proud of the way she's curated her social media feed, I don't follow certain accounts. And I use the mute and block button. And I click the not interested button often. If I notice an uptick in the type of content I don't want to see, that's how I know it's worse for other people. Because I've curated my space. And as I'm spending less time on TikTok and more time on Instagram, an algorithm that's less curated for me, I am getting so many ads for weight loss. So many. And I I am adamantly not about that on my page. And yet they are still serving it to me. So I can imagine that if you haven't curated your space as much as I have, you're probably getting it even more. And to that, I say, I am so sorry. It is rough out here. I'm getting it on my TV in between my show. I'm getting commercials for weight loss left and right. I'm getting emails as an influencer. I could get free GLP-1 supplements if I wanted to. Every week I get an email asking me to promote some kind of weight loss brand, a shot, an injection, a wrap. I got one recently for liposuction. It's rough out here. I'm so sick of it. So if you're feeling weighed down by an increase in this information, you're not alone. It is happening. (laughs) It does seem to be everywhere, but you don't have to listen to it. And here's the thing that I think is interesting that's happening. I am getting some targeted ads for the the actual weight loss injections like Ozempic, Wagovi, whatever. But a lot of the things that I'm seeing now are like the next wave. So so they're targeted to people like, so you're not going to take the weight loss injection, but here's something else you can do. Here's a supplement. Here's a gummy. Here's a prescription. Here's a tablet. Here's a liquid. Here's a syringe. They'll give you anything, any form you want it to be. They are trying to market to you so hard. They know that not everyone's going to want to take a weight loss injection or have access to it because a lot, a lot of times you got to get them through a doctor. Not anymore. Now you can just fill out an online quiz if you want to. And that's scary. That's spooky. Who knows what the heck is in that? But if you're not going to do that, if you're wary of an injection, no matter where you get it, don't worry, we have all natural supplements. All natural my ass. I'm not here to debunk the ingredients in these things. I don't care. But what's angering me is how, as a society, we have once again normalized diet pills, fat pills, things that you could buy in the supplement section at Home Goods, are the things that people are selling on the internet in the name of health. And if you've listened to this podcast or you follow me on social media, you know 
that it's not about health. It's about money and it's about skinniness. They don't want you to be well. They don't want you to be healthy. They want your money. They will get it any way they have to. Gummies, supplements, if they have to pay me to do so. And what I'm also seeing is because as a culture, we've kind of all, we all kind of have a general awareness of diet culture these days, even if you're actively participating in it, but we all know companies, especially that diet is a icky word now. No, we're not dieting. It's a lifestyle. No, it's not a weight loss injection. It's a health supplement. We've just rebranded diet culture as wellness culture to make it more socially acceptable. Creators that I've been seeing saying, oh yeah, I'm taking this. Don't worry. I'm not taking it for weight loss because that's a sticky subject. And some people get up in arms about that. Don't worry. That's not what I'm doing it for. I'm doing it for health. But then they're sharing before and after photos. I can't tell what your health is in the photo. If you're truly doing it about health, tell me how you feel. Don't show me how you look. Okay. I am so sick of us pretending it's about health. (laughs) Don't lie to me. I'd rather you outright say, yeah, actually it is for weight loss. Because then I at least know what your intentions are. But stop trying to convince me it's a wellness thing. It's a health thing. And you're sharing the size of your body and how it's changed externally, physically. If you want to convince me that something has had a benefit for your health, show me your blood work. Tell me about your immune system. Get a note from your doctor. (laughs) That's what I need. I need a note from your doctor. That's like, that's how I feel these days. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle culture is so heavy so strong right now. And I encourage you as always, you don't have to participate and you are allowed to remove it from your feed. If you're following someone who is making you feel icky about your own relationship with your body, food, weight loss or not mute, unfollow block. It doesn't have to be about them. It's not, this is about you and how you feel and how it's making you feel. If someone you're following or ads you're getting, or TV shows you're watching are making you feel like you need to change your body, making you feel inadequate about your life in any way, remove it. Block, unfollow, mute, goodbye. And then add back in accounts that are counter to that message. Add back in people that are sharing positive things. Add back in freaking memes and silly cat video accounts. Fill your feed with things that are gonna make you laugh, make you encouraged, not tear you down. Speaking of media that we consume, I recently consumed the show The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives on Hulu, as a lot of us did. That's not a show that I typically watch. I'm not that much of a reality TV show person. I actually thought it was going to be more of a docu-series style, and I was kind of bummed that it wasn't, but it was addicting enough to watch that I did watch the whole season. (laughs) And uh, to no surprise, of course, it's a group of Mormon wives, loosely Mormon wives, uh, who have created this TikTok group called Mom Talk. And they do silly little dance videos and supposedly have like a community of moms who are doing things different in the Mormon community, whatever. I'm not here to dissect their lives and their things. But one little thing I want to point out that I noticed, there's this popular thing that they all consume that I'm seeing now circulate in real life. And that's like their soda culture. So because the Mormon faith doesn't allow you to drink coffee, a lot of them consume soda as their caffeine source. They will have like 44 ounce sodas multiple times a day. So much soda. And we all know that soda is not that great for you. And I don't care if you drink it. But what I think is interesting is nobody is commenting, oh my gosh, that's such an unhealthy lifestyle to promote because they're thin. If I drank a 44 ounce soda multiple times a day and shared that on my social media platform, I would never hear the end of it. I would be bullied to the ends of the earth. How dare you promote an unhealthy lifestyle? That's promoting obesity. That's disgusting. You're gross. You're unhealthy. But when the skinny mom talk girlies do it, oh my gosh, goals, what's your soda recipe? Because it's not just soda. They're putting syrups and creams and all sorts of fancy things in it. They got soda shops out there. No, it's a, let me try the recipe. It's a, where can I get one? It's not about hell. Nobody's concerned that they're drinking 44 ounce sodas three times a day because at least they're skinny. And now what I'm seeing happen is people are turning them into protein sodas, of course, because protein has to be in everything. So we're pouring protein shakes in our Diet Cokes. What are we doing? (laughs) What are we doing? Here's the thing. Imagine thinking that a 44 ounce protein soda was healthier than having like three full meals a day. A meal with protein, carbs, fats, fruits, vegetables. No, give me the 44 ounce protein soda. 
That is the epitome of hell. What are we doing? <sighs> anyway, I just had to I just had to get that one out there because it was driving me crazy. Another thing that's happening, speaking of anything but just eating balanced meals, a trend that I'm seeing increase is this animal-based diet. Similar to the carnivore diet, it's kind of like a new, newer version of keto. It's heavy on the fats, about 30% protein. I don't think it has a specific calorie limit, so like, cool on that. But it's something I'm starting to see pop up more frequently. So let me just give two cents on it. The thing that's happening is girls, specifically females, are raving about, it's making my hair grow, it's making my skin glow, it's making me feel so good. And of course, they're sharing all their weight loss benefits, but they're not wrong in some of these benefits. But you know why they feel good and their skin is glowing? is because they're finally eating enough. They're finally eating fats, things that previously have been demonized by diet culture. You're finally getting enough of them. Please keep eating fats and proteins. But it's not because you're cutting out carbs. It's not because you're eliminating a few choice vegetables. Which, by the way, if any diet is telling you to avoid specific fruits and vegetables, please run for the hills. Unless you're allergic, you can have it. So I'm I'm glad to see a diet, even as trendy as it is, that is encouraging people to eat more, but you still need to eat carbs and grains and fiber and fruits and veggies. Please don't just eat steak and eggs. Please don't just eat sweet potatoes and butter. Those things have nutrients in them, but you need nutrients from the rest of your food too. You need a variety of foods. You need to be eating enough, yes, but not by cutting out certain food groups and going overboard on some. Nutrition information does not have to be that complicated. We know what we need, but we like to add all these rules and challenges and eat off a freaking cutting board and it's got health benefits. Just eat some damn food. I'm feeling spicy in this episode today because I'm just so annoyed and how often we try to reframe all of this stuff to make it trendy and capitalize on it and sell you something. And of course, now on TikTok shop, you can get their cutting board specifically that they're eating their animal-based diet on. Oh my God, just eat some damn food. Hey, last thing I want to talk about <laughs> is the winter arc. Have you heard of the winter arc? Um, It's kind of like the 75 hard, but uh, big girls. And because there's less than 75 days left in the year. So uh, can't do it. It's not a fun round number. So the winter arc is for the people who don't want to wait till January 1st. Don't let October, November, December make you feel dusty and boring and depressed. No, we're starting now. We're going to be our hottest selves now so that we're one step ahead of the game come January 1st. It's just a rebranded 75 hard. Some people are doing it for three months. Some people are doing it from October to April. I don't care. I am not anti-pursuing your goals. I am not anti-challenge. I am pro-sustainable habits. If you are the kind of person who is motivated by something like a 30-day, 60-day, 75-day challenge, that's great. But what happens after that? It doesn't have to be a journey. Yes, it is often that we spend November and December because of the holidays. We are often eating more foods, having more treats, spending less time in the gym, spending less time outside, it's cold. That a lot of times, yes, we come January 1st and we're feeling like, ugh, I need to start again. So I get the appeal of trying to avoid that. Start now so that you don't let yourself go over the holidays. But it's just adding more pressure to these next few months. Like on top of trying to figure out what you're going to get everybody for Christmas, you also have to make sure you're sticking to your gym plan. Give me a break. You don't need to do a winter arc. I'm going to tell you right now, you heard it here first. You don't need to get hotter over the winter. There's a phrase I used to see on Pinterest and Tumblr and whatever. It was like, summer bodies are made in the winter. Summer bodies are any size, first of all. So ditch that phrase. Healthy bodies are made all year round. Okay? Sustainable habits are ones that you want to do after the 60-day thing is over. It is healthier for you to pursue something that you do twice a week three times a week, every other day, than something you do perfectly for 14 days at a time. If you can stick to something for seven days and then you can't do it for three weeks, that's not as helpful as something you do every other day. as something you do three times a week, but you do it three times a week, every week. It doesn't have to be this all or nothing. 75 days are bust. 
every day doesn't have to feel like day one. This is it. I'm, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be thin. I'm going to be whatever. I don't care. Like insert goal here. Stop viewing it as this day one or bust situation. It's just another day. Every day is a new chance to choose a new habit and to build a sustainable, healthy routine that makes you feel good forever. Because I'll say, I've said it once and I'll say it a thousand more times. Your body is meant to change. If you base your goals on the size of your body, they will never last. You have to separate them. Enjoy the holidays. Enjoy the Halloween candy. Don't stress about your winter arc. It's a made up marketing term. (laughs) You're going to be fine. And come back here on January 1st because I'll have (laughs) another episode to remind you the same thing. When the pressures are feeling heavy again and the marketing is strong and you're feeling like I must take a GLP-1 gummy or else I'm missing out, you're not. Their ads are working. Get off your phone, okay? I love you so much. Stay safe out there and happy Halloween. Bye.